wild times. Woo! We're back. Yes. Episode 77. Peter, don't freak out when I say the episode number of the <laughs> wild times. The greatest show on the air. Mm -hmm. We're in the studio. We're drinking claws. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Cheers mates. Yeah, it's important. Cheers on the ground. Yep. Cheers. Let's not wait for me. Don't no. wait for me. Black cherry, work. very sweet. Very sweet. I actually think flavor. it's my favorite claw flavor. It's very good, too. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Tasty. We are here. We're, We're in the here. studio. Here we yep. are. Kyle's here. here. Kyle's He's here. Using a real camera to take pictures Welcome, of us. Welcome, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Everybody thinks that Kyle's made up because there's no camera angle pointing that way. Well, I just posted a story with him in it. I think they think he's real. Nobody now. looks at your social he's, media. He's you the newest Facebook. member of the Wild Times family. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good Welcome, to have him. Kyle. It's great to have you. And yeah, and for those that only now know who Kyle is, first of all, you're 77 episodes late. Catch up. Yep. Secondly, I'm your host, Forrest Galante, the broologist. I'm a biologist who bros out with these two. Tweedledee and Tweedledums. He was going to call us dunces. I was going to call you dunces, it's true. <laughs> the uh, the professor, Mr. Retep. What's up, Retep? Hey, not much. Uh, happy to be here. Love driving to Santa Barbara. Love the weather here. It's nice. And uh, love you guys. Love awesome. It. Yeah. And, of course, the one and only, the Papa P, the pen popper himself, Patrick DeLuca, the producer. What's up, yep. Pat? Good. Feel great. I'm excited. I've got a few... Like fun little games and surprises for you. Ooh. Like, uh, like when you brought candy corn? Yeah. <laughs> They're still here. I know. Still here. <laughs> Second bag. You know what else is yeah. interesting? He wore the same outfit last well, week. Because it was this fucking studio, <laughs> the air conditioning doesn't work. It's true. Right. Well, I does. mean, if we're being honest, it was brutal this summer. <laughs> it was very hot. <laughs> now it's feeling like fall. It's chilly in here. Uh, my parka or whatever this thing is called hides my fat gut in the profile wide shot, yeah, sure. which is nice. You've got your God. Christmas tree up by now, I presume. Yeah, yeah. it's up, baby. <laughs> flocked. <laughs> they got the flocked one in the office. Nice. <laughs> yeah, probably going to wait a couple weeks to decorate. But Smart. Those yeah, treat yourself. Treat yourself. Yeah. Treat yourself. So I've got a challenge to the Brosners. This is yeah. a wildlife podcast. You should fucking know that by now, right? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. We talk time. a lot of adventure. Yep. You probably know who Forrest is. Maybe. Um, I got a challenge for the Brosners. <laughs> I Getting want you to yourself. get in touch with us any of the ways that you can. DM yeah. them, whatever. Passenger pigeon. I want you to write. Messenger pigeon. I'm inspired. Norm MacDonald was my favorite comedian. R.I.P. Yeah. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. He's so goddamn funny. He did something Hilarious. really fun on his podcast where he would hand the guests note cards and they would have these terrible jokes and they had to read them and try to get a laugh. <laughs> okay. And it's one of the funniest things that they did on the podcast. Oh, I love this. Okay. So I want the Brosners to write sort of dad jokes. Oh, wow. About the three of us, but oh, this is good. they have to in some way incorporate an animal. Oh, this is tricky, but good. Okay. And then we will read them, and we'll take turns reading them and see who can get a laugh out of them. It's great. Okay. And how you deliver it, and yeah, yeah. it's great. It's a great, it's great. Yeah. I love that. It's yeah. a good idea. Brosners, you need to do that for us, because we're not smart enough to write our own jokes, so write them for us. Let's see if we can I, get a laugh. I do have one. Oh, that, you got that, one. That, a dad joke. Kind of uh, at Forrest's expense, if you'd like to hear it. You don't say whose expense. Do you know how to tell a joke? Have you told a joke before, <laughs> mate? All right, I, I, it's fine. I won't tell it. No, no please, please, tell please, it. please, please, God. Please. I'll kill myself yeah. if you don't tell it. <laughs> he will. Well, Forrest, uh, we all know that you're a bit of a technological idiot. Not Pat, true. what mm -hmm. do you think Forrest's password is that he uses for everything? I don't know. What is it? One, Forrest, one. <laughs> oh, zing. Huh? Oh, man. Yep. Very oh, good. Oh, boy. That's good. That's um, Forrest. Something. Yes. Uh, uh, before we came up here, because we're responsible, we all went to get COVID tests. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, and so Peter went first. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they were doing the, the one up the nose pipe, the yep. nose pipe, the yep. nasal Oh, one. yeah. And so she said, the nurse says to Peter, she's like, uh, you know, okay, tilt your head back. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to mm -hmm. stick this up your nose. And, uh, Swish it around a little bit and just try not to move your head and uh, try not to oink. Because <laughs> he's fat. Yeah, I get it. Because he's, he's fat. Uh, what a terrible joke. Words. Come so on. So much it's, setup. It's not. <laughs> That's a joke has some setup. I mean, again. Try not to oink. Yeah, I get it. It's, he's a pig. I get it. It's I mean, you, it's, <laughs> that's the kind of joke we're looking for. Yeah, no, that's big. Yeah, but that's when somebody big. listens to this podcast three years from now, now you got to remind them of COVID. It could have been anything. I could have been getting a haircut. I could have been at the doctor. Terrible joke. Terrible. Oh. Fuck off. Wow. 
<laughs> All right, there's a lot going on in here. Uh, it's a mess. I don't have any preloaded like you guys do, unfortunately. And yeah, I don't we, have... we thought of them in the car. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, I'm not quippy enough to come up with them on the fly. Well, I mean, I think Pat has well, one more. I know he had. I'm going to wait a little bit. I wrote one about you, but we're going to wait a little bit. Right. You're not going to know when it's coming. He's Stay for us for that. I've brought something to the table. Peter's brought something to the podcast. What do you have? <laughs> Put me on block. I got people that like me. I got okay. roaster right. DMs left and right. Okay. Here's one of the things. If you're a Patreon, if you patron us, is that how you say it? Yeah. The, yeah. yeah, patron us. If patron? you patron us, then you get to send us cool messages and links and direct messages, and we get to talk about them on air, which is yeah. fun for us. Let's do it right now. So, at Nick Delahunty said to me, y'all seen this yet? Be an E by a badger. Now, I haven't seen this video. We can't have that. We'll definitely get taken off of I'm YouTube. Sure what that was. <laughs> it's a song. They put like an actual song, which actually does add to this video. Go to screen four, Patrick. What are we looking at here? All so right, this so you, badger. You have an American badger, and it just got snow shoveled out of someone's. <laughs> oh, I see what's going on here. Oh my goodness! So there's a badger who's just trying to back that ass up. What right? does it mean, B and E by badger? Breaking and oh, breaking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's trying to back up into this guy's home, and this guy just keeps <laughs> snow shoveling him out. What's the, uh, what's it do? Is that how it, like, does its thing with its behind there? I don't know what it's doing, to be honest. It, it's, oh, I know this, though. You don't want to mess with a pissed off badger. No, I this. was just going to say, uh, man, uh, nope. that guy is the only thing separating him from badger. It's snow shovel. Is a snow shovel. Yeah, no, that's a, that is a bold move. Dude, yeah. what would happen if a badger got you? If that thing turned on him, you'd be screwed. They, if badgers got to the size of like a grizzly bear, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they would dominate the earth. Yeah, well, they are agreed. unbelievably <laughs> strong and gnarly, and and they have crazy jaw power and digging ability. They're crazy. Well, so let's say that was what a twenty. Let's call that a twenty-four pound badger. Very obese. very specific. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say five. I was like, that's too much. <laughs> okay, uh, that's, that was like a twenty-four pound badger that was the guy was kicking out of his. So. Let's say that thing gets around the shovel and has yep. now identified this guy as threat number one. Yep. How much damage is a 24-pound North American badger doing to human? That will chew right through your Achilles tendon, crippling you for life. No question. Good God. They are gnarly wow. animals. Now, yeah. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. That would be right. a very specific attack. Right. But, um, no, they are gnarly, gnarly creatures. Oof. I had not seen that video before. Um, so yeah, Nick Delahunty, that's quite something, just looking at a badger. I, I don't know why he's trying to back up into that guy's shed the whole time. It's very strange that it's, yeah. it's, it's like normally an animal is, is getting the fuck out of there. It's terrifying. Like it's a gone. raccoon yeah. is like running the exactly. fuck away, taking a shit on the way, like scared shitless. Most likely. That thing was like, fuck off, like I'm going to barrel my butt right in here. And he's fucking like, he, the guy was being well, nice. Here, here's he a possibility. Even, he, like, Maybe it had, uh... <laughs> Little tiny little badgers that it was watching over inside. Under the house, maybe? Like in the Under basement? Under the house. Yeah. In the garage. Could be. Or maybe the badger was just like, fuck off, just mate. I've been in here for two months. <laughs> just being a fucking badger, dude. I'm dude. curious if they back in. Yeah. Like, you is know, that like a maybe natural behavior? I have behavior. to look it up. I don't know. Um, like, I'm curious if, like, when they go into their burrows, they just kind of back it on up. In the, in the interim, while he's looking that up, you mentioned uh, getting your Achilles heel bitten in half by one of these badgers. <laughs> yes, I did. I have a, uh, a friend who who literally was playing basketball and took a step. Okay. Fucking tore his Achilles tendon. How old is he? He's like th- probably 40, maybe 45 Okay. Because uh, I have a, one of my best friends since I was three was just playing pickleball. Yeah, he's in much that's better a, shape. That's than a I am. big thing at the moment. Pickleball. I haven't it's played it. So yet. much fun. Is it? Boop. I, I've only done it once. About it. It's really fun. Okay. Because you're pretty much. It's not like tennis where it's very frustrating. Yeah. yeah. Pickleball, you're good like five minutes in. Great. You're smacking the shit out of the ball. That adds up. But or he popped his Achilles, Achilles just playing fucking pickleball, man. He's like, I'm gonna yeah. be out of commission for a year, dude. Jesus. So first of all, the story I was told was that he was at the Y. It popped. Everybody looked. It's like the loudest injury Ugh, in the fucking popped. world. That's, yeah. Ugh. But I'm I'm thinking to myself, what is like what is going on? You're taking a step. You get to this age where all of a sudden all you have to do is take a step and you're fucked. Are you scared? I'm scared. This is gonna happen to you for sure. No chance. I couldn't imagine if there's, you were laid up. There's no chance. If you were laid up, you would be the most miserable human being in the world. Oh. 
Dude, it's so funny because my my significant <laughs> other was asking me. She was like, "Why? Like, is Forrest just always shooting? Because you know we're always trying to figure out the dates that we can record." Yeah, I was like, "No, he gets home, and he's got about twelve hours before he's fucking climbing walls." Yeah, yeah. yeah. You are not good at just being home. A hundred percent. No, no. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and defend myself on this topic. No, you're, it's you're fine. You're, you're, you're a bit like a Tasmanian devil. No, I'm. Yeah. yeah so is your child. <laughs> <laughs> You've taught him well. He's yeah. going to be exactly like you, no, by the way. it's a mess. I go nuts. But yeah, no, I can't sit still. I'm not very good at that. In fact, the most time I sit still is either when I'm forced on an airplane or in the studio with you two. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, but once you're forced onto the airplane, that's when the snoozeberries come out. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Snoozeberries. Um, I'm definitely calling them that from now on. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get the what's in the news drop? Because I've been dying to ask for us about something. Ooh. Okay. What, uh, I, 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 I tell you. It's, it's, it's listen. You ask, you ask listen. Peter for a drop. It's I, I literally. I'm on air. Two. You want me to be on air fucking talent? And you want me to ma- do the screen talent. share? The goddamn talent. He says talent. Talent. Like, a- Fuck you. He says it ain't talent. Easy. Like as if it's like fucking Mariah Carey show got to the building where she's playing the concert. Everybody knows the I carry the here. show. His hair's longer. Yeah. I'm sorry. I fucking, I'm sorry. I muted my PC because I'm doing a thousand things. Eat my dick, meager. You're still the What's in the news? I'm sorry, Kyle. I, I am genuinely sorry. I'm hammered. Um, Forrest, I saw this, got real excited about it. Okay. I'd never heard of this creature. Let's play. I think if you could pull it up number four, Peter, we'll go to it. Here's the headline. And you tell me if you know what this thing's talking about. The bizarre pig-faced shark found dead in the Mediterranean Sea. (laughs) Is it real? Look at that (laughs) fucking thing. It looks like our friend Ethan, who's an avid podcast (laughs) listener. (laughs) Thank you, Ethan. It really, it looks like a fucking pig. It's, it's funny that you, so I, I knew that this was in the document. I had sure. seen, I've seen these sharks before. I've never seen one in person, but I've seen uh, images and descriptions of them. Yeah. And I was going to set up the same story by telling Peter that he had a new spirit animal. <laughs> oh, shit. So I, I just like, blew it. It's okay. I like You still got the joke too. in. We yeah, got to no, get this I, thing on a I shirt. Well, let's hear how you would have done it. Here's your opportunity for a dad joke. Oh, sure. Well, I would have been like, well, Peter, hey. we all know that you love the blobfish. Yeah. Well, I found something that you're going to like even more, you piece of pig trash. <laughs> Boom, it. and there it is. And then we're in. <laughs> okay. Before we get into this, I have one quick question. Yes. About this image, the guy behind with the huge leg. Yeah, it is, is a huge leg. Is he, is he ripped or is he overweight? I, I'm curious. I, I know guys like this. Uh, my next door neighbor had those calves. My my it's high school enormous. football coach had those calves. Yeah, it's genetic. He was a small guy, but his calves were wider than the trunk of my body. Yeah, and it didn't make any sense. Yeah, it's genetic, I've never man. seen a bigger calf except for a guy. Even even guys who work out don't have calves. This NFL big. running backs don't look like this. <laughs> no. It's like a certain yeah. like suburban dad yep. thing where it's like exactly. one out of twenty five of them have yep. just it's these a suburban pre-trunks. dad thing, and they they all wear tivas. Yeah, so you got abs like that. You <laughs> wear Tevas. I love Tevas. Um, you would not a sponsor. What is this creature? It's a pigfish. Um, they also oh. call it a pig-faced. Or what did you say? Pig, pig-faced, pig-faced shark. shark yeah, yeah, but I've I've heard of it before as a pigfish is the common name. Um, they're a deep water rough shark. They live on the bottom. They're slow moving. Um, yeah, very fat, very funny looking. Uh, they're they're these rough sharks are they're bottom dwellers. They eat mollusks, crustaceans, small fish. They're very, they're super rare. You know, they have these blunt, weird faces yeah. that are just made for eating crabs and small mollusks and things in the muck, and they just sort of gotcha. swim around slowly in the deep water. And it look. says that when you pull it, when they pulled it out of the water, it was grunting. It was making a grunting sound, like literally like boinking like Ritap at the yeah. COVID test. <laughs> so, uh, see what you did there. Yeah. Brought your comedy full circle. Yeah. Very so, nice. So, I thought you said that it was, uh, it wasn't alive. So, they, they pulled it out. Oh, sorry. Maybe not this one. It says that when they're pulled out of the water, they make a grunting sound. So a few it looks like a grunty fish. A few different fish actually will make funny sounds when you pull them out of the water. But yeah, I have seen this family of sharks before. I hadn't seen this specific um, one, but they're super ugly. I, I think th- they look great. Have you heard of... So when I was reading the article, it, it mentioned that in July of 2019, that some fishermen in the Mediterranean trawled up something known as a naked shark. Haven't heard of a naked shark. That's it new to me. It is a shark that is seemingly born with no skin or teeth. What? 
no skin, somehow what? lived for three years. So just organs and bones? Yeah, how does that work? Just or- literally organs and bones. If you click the link in there, Peter, there's a, uh, a picture of it. It's but that's crazy so that it made it to three years old with no skin or teeth. A shark. And they don't know if this is a species or like a deformation. Really well, weird. The mutant from There's the so depths. much weird shit going on once you get down below 200 feet. Oh. Like, it's just wild. Well, while we're doing what's in the news on that very topic, yeah. take a look at, at number five. In a test, scientists decided to sink three alligator carcasses to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. Okay. Huh. This is why science is great, right? Because you're like, hey, I'm a yeah, scientist. By the way, these doing? are scientists in Louisiana, so, you know, it's kind of them a little slack here. Fair enough. But, you know, <laughs> they're, they're trying to figure out how many, what their boob ratio that they can see on Bourbon Street is. Um, but when they're not doing that, they're thinking that sinking alligators to the bottom of the ocean is science, which I love. But anyway. Sounds great. They sink three alligator carcasses to the bottom of the ocean, right? Mm-hmm. No big deal. I don't know why. Uh, it's an experiment, apparently. Sure. This is a very Louisiana University sure. to me. Um, so they sink three down. I'm trying to see if I can figure it out. So first alligator, less than a day, it's gone. Giant isopods, those big like sea yeah. crustaceans, mm-hmm. strip it clean, right? Scavengers, they rip it apart, come from the insides out, it's gone. Okay? Okay. Second carcass stays on the ocean floor longer. They leave it submerged for 51 days, fish it back out, it's picked clean. It's just a frame. Bones. Okay. okay. These are what you these are things that you expect to happen at the bottom of the ocean. Right. Yeah. Third carcass, gone. Ah. Disappeared. Gone. Something has swallowed it whole, yeah, according to the scientists at the University of Louisiana. Has Crack eaten a twelve foot alligator. Gone. No carcass. No carcass. So could she gone. It couldn't be something that dragged it away. Even so, it would have to be something very large, not something that a shark would do, not something a whale would do. Nope. Nobody knows. Just gone. Just Just gone. Now, would it be possible that something ate it and then something else came and finished it off or, like, cleared it out? nothing eats bone in the ocean. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You're talking about big, dense alligator skull and bone. The whole thing has been slurped up and gone. What's your... Okay, so what do you think did it? I think it's got to be one of these giant, slow-moving deep-sea sharks. You know, big seven-gill shark or Greenland shark or something like that. Every now and then they get a... They get video footage on the bottom of an oil platform of, you know, a big sea monster, and you kind of see the face of a giant deep-sea okay. shark coming in. But the fact that there's one down there big enough, potentially, to eat a 12-foot alligator hull, hmm. you're talking about a big old sea monster down there. Maybe I, something we don't know about. What about a giant squid that just grabbed it and dragged it back to its lair? Maybe. Something like that. Maybe. A giant octopus of some it's sort. It's possible. Nobody knows. It's all speculation. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot cool, of sense, though. right? An octopus, because they hang yeah. out in their little coven or whatever oh, yeah. it's called. They could just, it might have dragged it back. Mm-hmm. It's very smart. Who they knows? They didn't say. So what were they the, thinking they were going to find? Like, what was it? They were like, ah, experiment. What was the hypothesis? We got 12 grand to do an experiment. You got one? <laughs> Three alligators, bottom of the ocean? Yeah. Like, it's what? the University of Louisiana. Come on. Well, are these students? These are students, scientists, right? right? No. Scientists. I mean, according to the article, scientists. scientists. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I just love that somebody now, funded this. Like, you're, I know. Funded the tax it. dollars going towards people sinking alligators. To and the and what, do you think, right. what do you think the actual uh, experience of them going out to do this was? You know, they got together. They had a big... Crawfish bo- broil, they, <laughs> shitload they of white claws. They, yeah. they had some beers on the boat. They fucking weighed this thing down. Yep, they threw it down. Yep, I think that's that sounds, exactly what that they did. That sounds pretty much exactly yeah. like what happened. Every time Zero I've been to question. Louisiana, that's what happens. <laughs> We're yeah. doing something wrong. Uh, we need to s- get be scientists. <laughs> I, but it is interesting. I mean, what you know? Maybe something's dragging it off. Maybe it's an octopus. Sure, sure. Maybe it's a giant shark. Whatever it is, it's big enough to eat a whole adult alligator off the bottom of the ocean. Speaking of crawfish, crawfish boil, Mm -hmm. I know you just did one recently for your GF's sister's birthday. Forrest, you and I partook in one in Louisiana. Incredible one. Fantastic. I don't know if you've ever done a crawfish boil, Kyle, but they're fantastic. They always kind of look the same. There's a bunch of key ingredients. Yeah. Corn, potatoes. What's the go-to thing? I think there's a correct answer. What's, the, what's your go-to when a crawfish boil? You, they dump the whole thing oh, out. The shrimp. Okay. Shrimp. My my go-to in this in this one was the sausage because I'm lazy. What's yours, Kyle? I have not had one. Never had one. He goes for the corn. 
It's the sausage. Yeah. I, I go the sausage, man. Why? Easy. Easy. Lazy. Yeah, Dude, it's there's easy. the shrimp. It's like one no. peel. You get a whole it's legs I, I had to have my girlfriend like, peel my shrimp. I was like, how does this, what is this fucking who, legs are coming off? How old are you? Up? 38. <laughs> no, it, 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 I agree with him a little bit. Okay. You peel yeah. off a little piece. It's like, I would never make it in, in Everyone nature. Said, and a lot of people say the crawfish, you suck the butt out or whatever you do. <laughs> suck like, the butt right off. You've got all this delicious <laughs> andouille sausage sitting there. Yeah. It's just so waiting easy. to be picked. You're waiting to be grabbed. And it, it's not what most people are going for. Exactly. It's exactly. really not. It's Dude, a fucking crab claw? Get out of here. Well, what they a have nightmare. blue crabs, too. They're all, like, sharp and really hard to crack. Yeah. Oh, You're not getting a nice God. chunk of meat out of that. No, awesome. there's, like, one good hearty chunk of meat that's worth the effort in the fucking <laughs> crab on there, and it's in the claw. But Wait, where, where was I? Where's my invite for this crawfish boil? I love a good crawfish boil. I, uh, yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> No. It's not apparently. happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, I got more Brosner DMs. What do you got, man? Um, at Izzy, your favorite nobody says, I didn't know whales exploded in the wild. Just like naturally explode after they die? Nuts. Yeah. Very. So, real quick, before you pull up the link, okay. I haven't seen this yet, but I have a feeling I know exactly what it is. Why do you think a whale would explode in the wild? Well, I know the answer. Okay. Peter? I mean, it has you to do with some type of buildup of, of gas in this enormous animal, and uh, maybe it's just farting inside? I don't know. <laughs> inside farting its body? Inside. Internal farts? Yep. Farting inside. Let's go ahead and play the oh, video. Oh, this is not the video I was expecting. All right. So we're looking at a whale. For, if you're listening and not a watching whale. on YouTube, yep. mm -hmm. we're looking at a dead whale floating on oh, the surface. Oh, brutal. Kaboom. That's a small explosion. Yeah. Oh, it's horrific. Oh, oh we guts can't. everywhere. We're not going to be able to show this on. <laughs> yeah, we are. No it's way. Fine. Yeah. Who cares? Uh, their guts. Yeah, its guts are coming out. It looked like it exploded like almost out of its uh, throat. I think something. a shark God. nipped at it. I thought I saw okay. something thrash at it. Gotcha. Um, oh, God. Yeah, so, I mean, you guys got it or getting it. Oh, okay. This is in California, by the way. That's Channel Islands in the background. Mm. All right, switch it off, man. Switch it off. I like it. I want I want noodles. It's now. nature, man. Uh, yeah. Anybody else feel God. like a bowl of spaghetti? Bowl of maize. Some rum. Uh, um, my, my tummy hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it will. Um, yeah. So you guys got it. Um, Lizzie, Izzy, your favorite nobody. Uh, they die. They decompose. They're massive animals. They sit in the sun. Their stomach cavities and gut cavities fill up with gas as they decompose. Inside farts. Inside farts. The thing turns into a balloon, basically, and eventually pops. It's pretty interesting. I, when I was just in Utah, we had to take uh, ATVs to get from where you could park the car on the street to the location we were filming at. Mm -hmm. And day one, we're just going to scout, and there's quite a few dead cattle yep. just laying there. Uh, and they had been dead not that long. They, you couldn't even smell them on day one. Oh, okay. They weren't even bloated. No, not yet. But over the course of a week, I mean, they doubled in size. Just get, They get massively bloated. Yep. Of course. Um, and it's, yeah, I think it's nitrogen, some sort of gas that's mm -hmm. inside. I don't think they explode because I think the rawhide is tougher. Mm. Interesting. But, uh, oh, boy, did they smell. Well, <laughs> here's an interesting <laughs> tidbit. I don't know if either of you guys knew this. Do you know where zombies come from? All jokes aside, where the legend of zombies come from? I mean, I know that the Vikings had the, the dragoor. That was their their version of the zombie, but I don't okay. know like what. So, what I read was that the the zombie the legend of zombies started in Scandinavia. I don't remember which country specifically. And what would happen was they'd take their dead and they'd bury them in pretty poor topsoil, right? Like okay. sandy, shitty topsoil, and they would decompose, just right. like our whale friend we just saw, right? Mm -hmm. And as they would decompose, their stomachs would puff up and they bloat. And they would rise up through the layer of topsoil, ah. and all of a sudden you'd start seeing fingers poking out and toes poking out and faces poking up. Wow. And so, you know, in a time and place where we understood very little about science and everything was magic and gods right. and demons and stuff, right. we thought they were zombies coming back, these dead people rising slowly. Right. And that legend, you know, grew and evolved and so on and, and so forth until it was, you know, like people walking around. Sure. Now we have the Fear the Walking Dead. Exactly. So, so then they've said, oh, this would be better if you put them in a box and right. put them six feet down. Exactly. Interesting. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. It is gross to see. It is, it is disgusting to see. But these cattle, like, watching the progression of how much they were getting eaten each night. 
Was it uh, coyotes and things picking them apart or what? It's coyotes there. I saw wolf tracks there when I was in the, there in the winter, but cool. then someone was like, I don't think there should be wolves here. And then there's bear. Gotcha. So I just imagine Plenty there's probably a lot of them. coyotes. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Died from nitrogen bloat, we think. There was a rancher that we came in contact with. I think they might have been his cattle. And he said, basically, if, if the, the cows are used to eating pretty, like, shitty grass, whatever, mm-hmm. and then they come into, like, a real mineral-rich grass, uh-huh. they'll, they'll just get nitrogen bloat and die. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeesh. Yeesh. Can't handle Yeesh. it. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Any, I got more. Want me to keep going? Yeah, yeah man. I love the Broster DMs. DMs are cool, huh? yeah. So, BS Qua Aquariums. I'm reading that wrong. BSQ Aquariums, maybe? Could be. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> Probably. Sounds much better than what I said. BSQ Aquarium says, Hey, bros, did you guys see this woman save her dog from a black bear attack in Canada? She had a huge stick and bunted, <laughs> lol, oh, and wow. somehow okay, escaped I unscathed. I haven't seen this. I, we, I feel like we've had a lot of people fighting against bear to save their dogs There's lately. been a lot. Maybe yeah. it's one we've seen already, but nope, I definitely haven't seen this. All right, here we go. Is that the dog? Yes, that's the dog. That's the bear. Oh, oh my God. shit. Oh, the, the bear literally was like, it just like sorry. It just, like, headbutted her. It was an accident. It was an accident. It was. And so, the bear, look, the bear's like, oh, shit, you know, and bails instantly. Oh, wow. I love everybody in this scenario. I do, too. Yeah. Like, the bear, the oh, lady she for... Got fucking tr- She's good, though. Yeah. yeah. She's back up. Dog's okay. Yeah, so basically that's probably, what, a 150-pound black bear? So that's about right. Not huge. <laughs> what do you think's the going The lady's through? dog is running away. Yeah, look, she's look in at, her PJs. Look FYI. at when the bear pauses here. What do you think he's thinking before oops. he turns away? Just, oops! oops. Yeah. Yeah. Like I made a blunder. Yeah, exactly. Just sort of what the fuck? Like is he's this not thing? contemplating. Like should I go through with this? Don't think so. It's probably nope. better that the guy. So she's she got this stick, and he's saying she bunted, but like she kind of just did nothing. Yeah, with she bunted. the stick. But the bear's just running. And then tries to stop. Yeah, he kind of comes, comes up, up and yeah. skids on his back feet yeah. and just kind of ran into her. It's great. Might Speaking not have even gotten hurt. I think she got headbutted in the chest. No, I think she was fine. If I would. Uh, I'd love for that to be me because then I could show everybody <laughs> oh that video God. and be like, "Check out this thing that happened. No, nothing bad happened, but like, how cool is this? Oh, I got totally. tackled by a bear." Yeah, you're just like, yeah. I mean, people are like, "What? What were you feeling?" You're like. I well, just went back in, had my coffee. Yeah, just trying to look out for Scruffy. Not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, at all. Do you, I, yeah. that dog's name is not Scruffy. It's How like do you know? it's Butch or like Killer. <laughs> Sick balls. By the way, so if she would have hit, if she wouldn't have bunted, and she actually would have hit the bear with the stick, this probably would have turned out much different, right? I think it would have turned out worse for her. Yeah, like the bear would have attacked, no? It could have. I mean, at that point, it's feeling threatened, right? Because right now it runs into her and goes, oops, like, you know, like this was a mistake for everybody. But Mm -hmm. you start injuring the bear. Yeah. And it's probably feeling much more threatened. So She doesn't even hit it as she's getting up, which is pretty, like, I don't know what I'd do. She's in shock. Yeah, yeah, and, and so is the bear. <laughs> yes, everybody's shocked in that sense. It really does Except go to dog. show you. It really does go to show you how little interest they have in like actually hurting you. Yeah, I mean, of he course. He could have taken a couple swipes, and that would have been the end. Yeah, and instead the bear was like, "Oh, my bad," and peaced out. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's a regular yogi over here. He's just <laughs> chilling, trying to steal picnic <laughs> baskets. Ah, uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Dude, so Jordan we Lewis. on we we did a whole series on the the Patreon bonus podcast. <laughs> Uh, where we went through every episode of Extinct or Alive yeah, and did sort of the oh, what, yeah. what you didn't see, how people it was planned uh, behind the scenes. And people were like, dude, these are great. Like, you should do one for each episode, which, of course, maybe we'll do at some point. Who knows? We might. If we, we survive. If, if, if we're all still alive in a year or so, yeah, we'll do something like that. That makes sense. <laughs> people loved them. And I've gotten two different messages. One was from one of the Patreons, Y Myers. Okay. Who said, could we get a lot more in depth on the Saula episode? I really want to know what went into that cave expedition. Yeah. Let's talk on it. I mean, pretty interesting. Set up set up the expedition, how it went, and why we went where we went. He's like a he's like a teacher and he's assigning you something. Do no, it's it's it a good order. It's a good question. It is. Um, all right, so we went to Vietnam to look for the Saula. And the Saula is the Asian unicorn. It's this rare bovid related to a cow actually that uh has only ever been filmed once only ever been caught on camera two or three times there's only one in captivity ever um and it died very shortly after it was caught i mean very very rare animal super cool story Mm -hmm. now in the show and this is something we can admit openly we're like hey we can't we we can't find this thing 
but we got to go check out this cave. When in reality, we are always had the cave in our back pocket, yeah. right? And we, yeah. we had got all the permits and applications and everything, because it's not something you just show up and do. You don't right. just show up and, and march. It's like showing up and being like, I climb Everest tomorrow, <laughs> right? You know, like it eh, sounds like a good thing to do while I'm in Tibet. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so we we already had the idea that if you know if all else fails, we'll go check out the cave. So Patrick, this was, he really led this much more than I did. He's like, this cave's incredible. You know, it's it's absolutely something worth checking out. Showed it to me. I sort of looked at it with the biological lens and went, absolutely, there could easily be all kinds of species hiding down there, including the sala. Like, you have no idea. There's whole ecosystems in this cave that are, you know, cut off from the outside world. Mm -hmm. and, and I think also we knew that only one group of biologists had ever been inside the rainforest that, right. that's inside the cave. Right. 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 And they just didn't they discover a new monkey or so there's something a whole bunch. They, yeah. yeah. A whole bunch of things. So, yeah, it's so kind of like this unexplored place. Very much. So. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's a six mile long cave. It's the largest it's cave in the world. You could fit a New York City skyscraper in <laughs> with it. a rainforest in it. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Less um, than 2000 people at that point had been inside. Right. Wow. Ever. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So we, we went on this this hike, this long harrowing hike into the Anamite Mountains, found a bunch of snares, poachers, traps, very little life. And we're like, you know what? Fuck this. Like, there's nothing out here. We're not going to find a salo. Like, everything's been so hammered and poached and hit. Let's go to the cave. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, you know, at the, we had gone farther into the mountains in the opposite direction of the cave than we thought we would be. For sure. At the time where sure. you made the call. But, uh, but I was obviously stoked because... That the was cave a was big, sick. Big bucket list item was exploring that cave. It was incredible. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, there was pre production that went into it, obviously, getting a bunch of camera gear down some very steep things that you had to rappel down across yep. a yeah. lake that you have to then cross once you're in the cave. Like, there's a shitload of logistics that had to be done. So, yep. to have that done, we had discussed with some locals who were the people who take groups in there. Mm. Um, and they had set in place a bunch of stuff where if we called them from the sat phone, they would be basically ready for us in mm. two exactly. days. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we made that call, and then the fun started. Kind of interesting story. It's definitely not something we've talked about on the pod before. The guys that took us into the cave, there were these two, like, hilarious, chubby, middle-aged British dudes that on the outside look about as hard as marshmallows. Yeah. But were legit... <laughs> like pretty fucking hard caver guys. Yeah. They were the same guys who had rescued the kids in Thailand. You remember when oh, those yeah. kids went into the cave in Thailand yeah, and it flooded? The when then Elon Musk went in there he was with his boring tool, like there was the whole that I never heard about no, that. No, that was no. different. That was, oh, that different? was that was a collapsed cave I think in Chile or Argentina. Okay. Regardless. Yeah, regardless. There was there was this soccer team went into the cave if anybody doesn't remember, a soccer team that went into this cave in Thailand rains came up it flooded oh, kids yeah. were stuck in the cave basically slowly dying because they couldn't get out they didn't have enough air so on and so forth and uh it required the best cave divers in the world to go in through these tunnels through this rushing water in zero visibility My grab nightmare, these kids, by the way put them into like body bags with little oxygen masks, scuba tanks, and bring them out one at a time. Yeah, zero I do visibility. Remember this. Yeah, the divers are on a line the whole time. The kids are fucking terrified. I mean, like, well, we got some inside thing. scoop. Yeah, major inside scoop. Yeah, Let's hear it. major. Yeah. So, so first of all, the guys that took us into into what's the name of the Song cave? Songdong. Songdong Cave. Songdong. Um, were the guys that saved these kids? Right now, this is all I believe come out publicly at this point, but. The, the cave rescue in Thailand had basically just happened when we got there. It's like, what, yeah. two weeks prior or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And it was all still kind of hush-hush about how these kids came out. Well, what happened was these guys were going in these, these lava tubes or whatever they are, popping up, drugging the kids. Wow. Without parental consent. Yeah. And then putting them in these, like, body bags and shipping them out. But if they hadn't drugged the kids... Any kid could fucking spaz out, rip his regulator out, drown, not only oh just kill God. him, but kill the scuba divers. And by yeah. the way, if that happens in this tiny choke tube, yeah. nobody's getting in or out. Oh That's the end. So God. there was this whole, like, 
I don't even know if I should be talking about this, but I think it's public it, knowledge that, that now. That part came out. That part came There's out. There's another part that we're going to break right now that didn't come out. Though. Yeah, I'll leave that to you. I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. But yeah, so at this time, we're sitting there. We're in this cave with these two British dudes who are talking about this rescue mission with these kids in Thailand. They've just come off of this like a week prior. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, we're illegally drugging kids and shoving them in these body bags and pulling them out. <laughs> And, like, we didn't know what to do because they were going to either die, they're either going to kill us, kill themselves, both. And, like, you can't just go start telling people that you're drugging children. Of course. And there was, like, this big controversy where it was, they were like, don't tell anybody. And then I think it all got figured out and everybody found out about it. And there was a little bit of an outcry, but at the end of the day, the good outweighed the bad. There was one kid who had gone through the D.A.R.E. program at school and refused to be drugged, and he died in the cave. Oh, oh, really? My God. No, of course not. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I was like, I didn't remember that part of the story. No. That's a ridiculous statement you just I made. I legit, yeah. I bought it too because yeah, he's such he a good liar. It so deadpan. He, he's yeah. been lying he, for so long. Here's a, juicy, <laughs> here's a juicy tidbit, though. So the, the drugging thing came out, but there was a huge political thing that happened when they got to Thailand. Right. Which was... This is breaking, by the way. This has not been Thai, shared. There was a, the Thai dive team that was trying to... had had tried mm-hmm. to do some stuff to get them out realized they couldn't even get to the chamber. Right. Mm-hmm. But so they, they failed to get to the chamber. This is according to our sources that were the guys who actually did it. Right. <laughs> so when first they hand, got right. there, the first thing was they just wanted to see if they could get to the chamber, see what state the kids were in, and then figure out what okay, to do. How, now how do we get back? Yep. Sure. Then make a plan. How do we, you know, all quickly. Nobody's sleeping. It's not like you're of going course. to the hotel. Right. Yeah, it was time sensitive. So there's a big political thing with a bunch of politicians, Thai politicians, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they were not going to be allowed to go into the cave and rescue the kids unless they brought them mostly to the edge of the cave Right. Then handed them off to the local divers. The Thai oh, guys. Once they were through God, the hard Because they wow. wanted the Thai guys to look like heroes. They wanted the news crews to see the local divers emerging with the kids. Yeah. Otherwise, they weren't going to be allowed to do it. That's crazy. Yeah. So this is this is the thing that's pretty much so unknown. So can you imagine? Well, yeah, this is hugely controversial. By the way, these guys don't... This is not something they did for money. Right. right. They didn't get they did paid. It because it was right. Yeah. But they meanwhile, didn't get paid a cent. you've got a bunch of like PC police at the governmental level of Thailand going, oh, we want our people to look good. Who gives a shit who the hell look good? We're talking about kids' kids lives out. here, you yeah. know? And, and, it and was they're, like, super holding time sensitive. it up. Yeah. Oh, of course it's time sensitive. It was. Like, the, wasn't the cave, like, fucking filling with yeah. water well, more and more? And shit? Oxygen, they're running yeah. out of air. And they don't have any food or water. Oh, right. Clean water. God. And meanwhile, there's a bunch of politicians arguing about who's going to look good when they save the kids. Yeah, I mean, this is what you guys have talked about. It, it, I a mean, of these candy corns so here. You guys have talked about this before, just uh, with the, and it's not as, you know, life and death situation, but with, I mean, to you it was the, the Ferdinand Turtle, mm-hmm. you know, same kind of, is that wrong? Close. So close. It's I'm good. Not I'm not going to change it. It's funny. F- yeah. Ferdinand? Yeah. <laughs> Ferdinandino? Good. No, so. Uh, Closer? Yeah, but I mean, you know, you, you talk about the same thing, and this is, you know, again, I know, is I know, I, I give humans a, a lot of shit, but it it is one of the things, you know, that people want the fucking credit for sure for fucking big news stories. It doesn't really matter what it is if it's going to paint someone in a good light. People's out there trying to take credit yeah, for but it at the cost of human lives, I, at kids' I know. lives. That's crazy, right. man. If they had said no, we're not going to hand the kids off. We're just going to do it. Yeah, they would not have saved them. That's Correct. fucked up. And so, I don't know. It just drives me crazy. I've unfollowed a lot of my close friends Yeah. on Instagram. And part of the reason we don't talk politics on this podcast is because it sucks. It's grim. It's, yeah. it's so grim. You get enough of that, especially if you're on social media. Yep. Or if you're but friends if, with Forrest, who sends a text this morning, World War III well, is whatever. happening within but, the next 20 so, weeks without question. You've got, <laughs> you know, all these people were celebrating because there was a recall in California. And, yep. and yeah, yeah. Governor Newsom stayed in. And I, all these people were like, yeah, fuck you, Republicans. It's like... The fact that you think that this guy or any politician, period, yep. is altruistic. Right, yeah. exactly. Is nuts. It's think weird. about the behind the scenes, the reality of politicians playing with the lives of a bunch of children. Yep. Right. Because of who's going to get credit. Right. Yep. yep. I don't think that's just something in Thailand at no. all. That's no something way. everywhere. Everywhere. It's, it's about everything. It's about everything. 100%. It's, this is like if you, if you put your faith in a bunch of politicians, like it's, they're actors. What do you think? It's right. like cults, man. It's like, it's like they're, 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 I was thinking about this the other day. 
because of the fucking recall election, I was like, why do people... Why, like, one of the guys that was running against him was this AM conservative, conservative talk radio guy. I'm oh, like, yeah, the, people don't even the, know what this guy Larry looks Elder. like. Yeah, Larry Elder, yeah. But, like, it, it was just insane that, that there's, like, this cultish thing. It doesn't matter who the person is. It could be anybody. If they agree with your position, it's like you're on board. So they could say whatever the fuck they want. They want a few kids to die because they're not going to get credit for it. The People will literally, like, in their head justify it because this fucking weird, like, celebrity mentality because it's just it's out of control these days so don't text me about world war three anymore is my okay, point you for got us. it fella <laughs> <laughs> also stay off social media unless yeah. you're following the wild times the wild times I, meme I account can't. for escalante uh, yeah what a luxury <laughs> stay Mr. off Peter social Fitzer. media i'm yeah. over here running fucking wild times. you're very popular on the old interweb these days Am I? What yeah, do you mean? You got like six or seven people that like you. Yeah, yeah at, at least. least. That's more than ever in my entire life at one time, to be uh, honest. For sure. Double, Imagine. at least. Yeah. Forrest, does your lady friend listen to the podcast? No. God, no. We can destroy her on here. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> does yours? Yeah. Yeah. When she has time. So mine took a road trip last weekend. Yep. Not a long one. Just drove to San Diego. Away yep. from you, mate. I call her to say, just see how it was going. You know, whatever. Yep. How you doing? I was bored. Yep. She's like, I'm listening to the podcast of the Wild Times. I was like, oh, cool. She's like, yeah, it's like a real podcast. It is now like a real <laughs> podcast. Was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, like it's just, I, I was surprised. It's like a real thing. Because <laughs> she, she knows all three of us very well. Right. And she's just like, yeah, yeah they're three fucking clowns. She, exactly. She was there the very first day we recorded for Correct. four hours and came out with a 45 minute episode because we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. Correct. So from her perspective, we were just three morons, like getting yeah. hammered, and she was over there drinking wine, like laughing at our bullshit. <laughs> right, right, and like now it's evolved. We've got a studio. Well, we now got we've an got octopus. We've got Kyle with a real camera. Kyle, a look at yeah. his lens. He's got a two hundred mil. Oh my god, he's <laughs> picking there. out your nose hairs from yeah, that man. direction. No, from I that trimmed distance. him the other day. Good, Chemistry good. is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this, Forrest. You're a biologist. Yeah, I stopped trimming my nose hair when COVID. <laughs> oh, I've heard this. I know where you're going with this. We yeah. can all yeah. see. Well, because I was like, you breathe this shit in through your fucking mouth and ah, nose. Okay, okay. I was like, I might need these It's hairs. your dirt sweeper, I've man. I've got a lady. <laughs> it's keeping them out. I'm not leaving the house that much. I'm going to fucking let this thing, you know, let be, it be a fucking chia nose. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. <laughs> chia nose. <laughs> so what do you think? Is the vanity act of trimming the nose hair, is like, am I more likely to contract uh, a breakthrough case of COVID? I'm going to say yes. Fuck. I'm going to say yes. Because I looked in the mirror and I was like, this is your... Guys Trim over the up. decades and centuries have been making excuses as to why they should not groom themselves. This is just another one of those, man. All right. No, but you, keep you're it growing. Right, but keep it, it growing. The biological, yeah, there's a necessity for nose hair. It keeps things out of your sinuses. Sure. Including germs. Yeah. The thing that gets me that we don't need, that there is not a fucking biological necessity for, that Jess, my barber, my barber's name is Jess, uh -huh. points out every single fucking time I sit in the chair <laughs> is that I have ear hairs now. Uh, yeah. And she asks me every time, yeah. should I trim your ear, ear hairs? Yes, Jess, you should. Yeah. <laughs> but you should not ask me. Yeah. You yeah. just do it and yeah. pretend they don't exist. Yeah, it's like I'll notice, I'll know you're doing it when mm -hmm. the buzzer hits my ear. Correct. You right. have... A lifetime consent to right. trim my fucking ear <laughs> And we don't need to ever discuss asking. this, ever. I know I'm getting older. Right. I understand there is now hair yeah, growing exactly. from my ears. Yeah. Let's not talk about it. You right. trim it, keep it keep it in check, move on. Listen, yeah, it's... I, uh, since I've the hair has just grown out, I never have gotten it cut in like two years now. So it's I just let it start growing. It looked terrible you for a You haven't cut while. your hair in two years? Uh, it's That's been like, cool. It's been like a year. It's been a while. I mean, I had one, whatever. But point, <laughs> case in point, the the air the ear hair for me has been a problem for many years and I'm not a hairy person, but now it's like shaggy on my fucking white shaggy hairs or blonde I should say on the back. I don't have to deal with them anymore. The long hair covers it up. It's true. Bingo. That's a tip. It's a tip. That's, a tip. I mean, that's some good takeaway for all the for all the brothers. <laughs> we can go. Is this that is one it. of Retep's dating tips? It's been so long. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I mean, I think I'm in a relationship. I don't know if. Uh, no, but you give dating advice. Well, you did once on it's, one show. It's our yeah. lowest viewed video on YouTube. <laughs> People loved it. Now they were loving it. Mate. <laughs> um, but yeah. So then. So yeah. So we did. You made the call to go. Yeah. They cut to a shot of me. 
they being the editors. Yep. I think Jesse cut Jesse. that one. Yep. And uh, they cut to a shot of me looking very concerned, mm-hmm. even though I was just trying to hide how excited I was that we were yeah. going to go to the cave. You, <laughs> you were a little concerned we had to hike back out. It I wasn't mean, we a had pleasant to hike, hike back out either way. It just wasn't pleasant, man. I just never got used to the leeches. Yeah. There was Love nothing oh, yeah. that, that you that. can do to get rid of the heebie jeebies nope. if leeches get you. So yeah. many Especially leeches. if you've seen Stand By Me. Fucking crazy how. They just are everywhere, and everywhere. you don't feel them. Yep. You just look down that at your sock. God weird. damn, they're gross. Do we need them? No. Okay. We can get rid of them then? I have, <laughs> there, have you ever had a leech on you, Kyle? I've never. He does, Kyle well, does he a lot know. of uh, fishing and, and a lot of outdoor stuff. Yeah. Never had a leech. I had never had a leech on me until this hiking in the Anamites. Well, again, no you wouldn't have known. There. They're very discreet. You've probably had several leeches on you, even in your own bathtub. No, it's because <laughs> you, you go to take your underpants down when you want to take a pee, <laughs> or you go to take your shoes off, or yeah, in your Dude, waistband. Sock line, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, You're like, oh, I've still got socks on. Those aren't socks. Uh, yeah, you yeah. ever see that famous Playboy photo from when we were like in middle school? It was yeah. Pamela Anderson oh, yeah. fully naked with mm. like a gold belly chain around yes. her. Yeah. Like, yeah. Very, very sexy. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. that, but it's these it's, horrific it's monsters. Black, slimy yeah, they're, leeches. They're like where things are tight around your exactly. body, right? They they net, they, that they're like, oh, can't get down those pants. I'll just stick in here. Do they, do they get do they get fatter oh, yeah. like ticks do? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, like, the Kamani, like a tiny little thing. Then, by the time you, oh, you yeah. pull your pants down, you got these big, fat. Oh, yeah. Blood and that's how filled. you know how long they were on. Yep. Oh, so, you, you're like, oh, shit, that one was on there for a while. And then you pull them off, they have an anticoagulant in their saliva, and it bleeds and bleeds and bleeds. Dude, these things are they suck. a they nightmare. Suck. Yeah. Nice. Get it? Get yeah. it? That's my dad joke. Okay, but I would well, say, so, Force, then we get to yeah. the yep. mouth of the cave. And we have our two guides that are going to help us get to the, the rainforest. Mm-hmm. That's a several day hike in. Yep. Obviously, we're all in fucking cloud nine. So exciting. Because uh, now we're out of leech territory. <laughs> <That> <laughs> go too. see the most amazing spectacle probably on earth. Um, and there's a moment where our guides are like, you know, we have to rappel down this thing. It's like, I can't remember. It's like a 300 foot, not mm-hmm. like a super scary rappel. It was probably like an 80 degree angle. Yeah. It wasn't one of those you're hanging. Right. right. Yeah. Still not a pure vertical. Feet is... Still, you know, pretty intense yeah. going yep. into the cave. Yep. And they want us to wear helmets. <sighs> right. Because right? these guys have a company this. that does this and they have insurance and they have things and, that they have to and, do. And I want to add to that. Hold on. Just shut the fuck up. You should be wearing a helmet. Go ahead for us. Time out. We can I know where this is going and I'm getting thrown under the bus here. Yeah. But I also want to point out that they also to go in this cave is very expensive. Okay? Mm-hmm. Just like climbing Mount Everest is it very includes forty thousand dollars. It's forty thousand dollars. Yeah. But it includes the helmet. But so the type of people that get to go in this cave are rich people that aren't used to doing hardcore expeditions. Okay. So our cave guys, as rad as they were, they're treating us like 70-year-old British guys that have too much money and want to go on a proper caving trip. Right. And so, you know, it's <laughs> like, here I am, like Forrest Galante adventurer extraordinaire, and right. they're like, put on your fucking safety vest. And I'm like, well, hold on, guy. All they right, did now not continue. Ask for, they did not have a safety vest. No, they didn't. They but had a the, helmet. The thing you wear when you get on a bicycle. And to protect your brain. The thing that protects what, brain? the amygdala the brain normally part. is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. So there are these orange helmets. <laughs> Forrest is not happy. He <laughs> just straps his helmet to his pack, and they're like, hey, guys, like, helmets are on, and Forrest's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, I can, can see that's see, just your hair. And so. they're pretty steadfast that he needs to wear his helmet. Sure. And uh, Forrest... So I go to talk to him. I'm like, dude, just fucking. He's like, I'm not fucking wearing it. Well, we're shooting like this cool, like rappel uh, down the yeah. fucking I, cave. I, I like could, it's I, badass. I I've got the that. hat going. I the do headlamp, get that point. Yeah. You know, and there's, and by the way, if someone had told me, I would have ordered a nice dark green helmet. Sure. And it would have looked fine. These right. things are fucking brighter <laughs> yeah. than the goddamn paint for <laughs> I, I swear, swear to God, like man. Cheap, like when you, get, when you got a cheap out on a bicycle helmet, it's it just looks like a up, giant bro. fucking And they're like yeah. foamy yeah. and they're this fucking color. And it's it's not even about the helmet. It's about the, the fact that I got to wear this neon thing and sure. we're in the cave and it's dark and cool and spooky. Not, yeah, for TV, it's not. I, I actually yeah. am starting to Thank side you. with him a little Thank bit. You. It's not very... Uh, totally Totally fair. Badass. Totally fair. He got really grumpy, mm-hmm. wore the helmet on the initial rappel, was then just mad at me. 
No, I wasn't mad. <laughs> no, you were, you were just mad in general. Yes. <laughs> but and I get it. It's your TV show, and you, you, yeah. you, know, you had to wear this uncool helmet. Probably Space by midway watch. through day one in the cave, they just got sick of asking you to put it on. Because yeah. you'll notice he's got it in a, a couple scenes, yeah. and then just no more helmet. Because every time, I just take it back off and strap it to my belt. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'd be like, Forrest, put your helmet on. Take it back now off. Now, the important it. question, how did his hair look? I was under a headlamp the whole time. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. kind of messy. But nice answer, by the way. Fuck off. When you get inside there, though, and you look back out up at the opening, it's insane. It is, yeah. I just need I, to clarify. I, I was talking to Pat for all the audio listeners. He just ignored my question entirely. What, you, you asked me how another man's hair looked. Like, what, what am I going to say? Fucking amazing. No, I know. It's, ba- it's bad because now <laughs> I have to. I, I don't, the problem is, is that I had to <laughs> reflect back to it, and then it sounded like I was talking shit to Forrest, which is really strange and makes me you're sound good. mean. You're, you're overthinking it. Relax. I'm hammered. Um, yeah. Any other juicy tidbits from the bo- <sighs> sort of behind the scenes? We've talked or about the cake. Planning. Yeah, we talked Cake about all huge. that. We we did eat nicely. I will say though, based on what you just said about the seventy or like you know that they're taking wealthy people in general yeah. in there because unless a TV production's paying for you to go in, it's very expensive. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can buy a house or you can go in this <laughs> cave. It is yeah, yeah only I think have a Tesla. up to three. I think now they're doing three hundred people a year, something like that. Yeah, are allowed so to go very in. Very exclusive. Yeah, much. and so it's expensive. Like uh, you know, as a result, but I will say. There were a couple sections of the traverse where we we're just going over that jagged ass rock. Yeah, for sure. And a couple sections where there was maybe a, I don't know, a 14 inch kind of thing you're walking across. And it's not like a nice smooth curb. Right. Mm. 14 inch wide, let's say. Yeah. And sheer drops on both sides. Yeah. Where, you, where, you know, you're not roped in in any section. Oh. Where wow. I was like, this is not something that. True. So, like, True. Forrest is like, I don't even remember that. I don't, to be honest. <laughs> uh, no, I do. I okay, do. but how about the climb out? The Not, climb out was fucking gnarly. There's yeah. no 70 year old British dudes that, you know, are up for a jolly good time doing that. Um, one thing that I don't think I, we've ever mentioned um, how sparkly it was. Just everything was shimmering. Dude, I, I'll share a video that you can throw on the, the IG or include in this with you. I took a video of it. It's it's so let me let me slug that. There's a little there's a drop in there. I'm just gonna pour some in there. For oh, me. what a gentleman! Um, <laughs> it's so sparkly. The whole cave looks like the fucking Twilight kids. You know how they're yeah. all sparkly? Yeah, 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 it's amazing, man. Every we and you didn't really get that in our cameras because I don't know it Certain wasn't what lighting. we focused on, but yeah. it's amazingly sparkly everywhere. Yeah, Very I mean beautiful. a lot a lot of the things things that I get from when you guys talk about these adventures are. Yeah, you know, the uh, I'm just laughing because Pat just spilled white claw all over it's the table. Fine. Well, don't pour a white claw into another can of white claw <laughs> yeah, if you don't mistake. want to spill something. Yeah, that's the mistake. But there, there is it. May, it makes me a bit jealous because I I don't get out enough, uh, especially in the last couple of years. But it's there's all these things that are really hard that don't translate through on camera. It just doesn't come through. Like Patrick cleaning up White Claw with our stuffed shirt. Well, that will come yeah. through on camera, just not on the audio <laughs> version of this. Sorry. But, you know, I think you were talking about just, like, certain things, you know, like, or the vastness. A lot of times I find that the vastness can't of places. You can't You just can't, can't do, do it. it. Like, yeah. Dude, yeah. you could stand up the Empire State Building inside of this cave. And it's pitch fucking it's black. crazy. So how yeah. do you show that on a camera, right? Because yeah. you're like, oh, see my light? It's way up there. <laughs> like, yeah, and then you're filming it. And uh, it's just like there's no way to explain how big I these mean, cameras Kyle, are. I'm sure you know this shooting. Like, like, you've dealt with this shooting the outdoor stuff. Like, our eye, you know, there's amazing lens and camera technology. It's getting better every year. Yep. Yeah. But there's no lens that can do anything close to what our eye can right, do. Right, right. Obviously, they can do cool, cool shit and zoom in. We don't sure. have that capability. But just capturing the actual depth of mm-hmm. something, and that was always the problem with, with the Greenland show, was that you just, we could never capture the scale. It's and so yeah. spectacular. Everything. And yeah. every season... We would have meetings with the whole camera team. Okay, what do we got? What's new? What What's the new thing we can do? To, and because it just never read. And then you'd watch the footage, and you're like, "Fuck!" Yeah, it's like flat it compared to what you saw. Anything like what? It, well, you know, it's just shit. Was that pre drones? Were you guys kind of doing no, that pre drones? drones? Yeah, but like you know, drones don't capture scale. I don't no, think. No, not like, really. They can show vastness, but not. 
I don't know. There's just something weird yeah. about size. Are, are there yeah. any other moments that you guys can think of off the top of your head where it's just, you know, it's on TV. Everybody's seen it, but it's there's something indescribable, not just like vastness, like something else that you sensed while you were there where you were like, like on, on Extinct or Alive shooting where it's just like nobody could even understand. We've tried to the, explain it in words. There's a, a witch doctor scene in the <laughs> leopard, the Zanzibar leopard episode. Yeah. That it cut together fine. And it's like it, it's good in the episode and everything. But it's very hard to explain that to like a Westerner, to mm-hmm. like a Western mind. So we're meeting with this witch doctor, right? And the, the prevailing belief in Zanzibar was that the witch doctors used to use leopards to do their evil bidding, okay? okay. So we're asking this, and that, the, and that the leopards were shapeshifters. They would shift between human and leopard. Okay. okay? So we're like, all right, you know, not necessary that, you know, as a scientist and a reasonable sure. person, not yeah. that we believe this, Patrick and I, but like, let's, you know, investigate, tell yeah. the story, all of that good stuff. So we, we rock up to this witch doctor. He's speaking in tongues and flailing around and throwing, like, dirt and bones in the air. Okay. And now this is where it gets hard to explain. First of all, the atmosphere is very heavy. The woman that he is curing, the witch doctor is the one doing all this spazzy stuff. Yeah. And the woman that he is curing has an ailment that he, and so she's coughing up a lung, which is disgusting, because we're sitting in this yeah. cave with this woman. She had, like, whooping cough. I mean, she had something bad. Something yeah. was probably contagious. If too. this was yeah. in COVID times, we would have run. Sure. Guaranteed. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, so we're sitting there with this woman hacking up a lung, mm. and this witch doctor, like, throwing dirt in the air and speaking in tongues, a- and we come to find out that she is sick because of an ailment that he, the witch doctor himself, had cursed on her, Wow. Because her neighbor had paid him two goats and a chicken to curse her. And unless she paid him three goats and a chicken, she was going to die of the sickness. Wow. So the witch doctor's just sitting here running this this Ponzi scheme. Yeah. Where he's like, yeah, you pay me, I'm making you sick. Yeah. And then you pay me more to make you better. And the people are, like, lining up for this service. Wow. And, and like, the vibe and the belief and, like, right. the heaviness of it. And mm-hmm. we're, like... Is no one else seeing how this is like a scam? Like mm-hmm. this is like this is the original Nigerian internet scam right here right. in this cave. Like yeah. it's Yeah. <laughs> he also like, you know, was wearing just like a red like Boston Red Sox t shirt. Yeah. Oh really? You know? Oh, yeah. And and then he he's doing his thing. She, which included her drinking urine. I, I have no judgment on that. Maybe it works. Who the fuck knows? And it tastes delicious. But and he's sterile. doing this like song and dance thing, just talking about not translating. And there was a moment where I realized it was a scam. Sure. Wasn't the whole three goats and a chicken, whatever. He does this thing where there's like a dance and rhythmic movements involved and many people are doing it. There's like yeah. fucking 15 instruments and they're playing this mm-hmm. cool ass wow. music, man. Big it production. was intense. But oh, yeah. you don't feel that intensity because how do you? Yeah. Right. right. If you're on a wide shot, you don't right. feel it. Right. Right. Cutting between close ups helps, but whatever. But he does this thing where he goes to kind of do this little like headstandy thing with his arms mm-hmm, down. Mm-hmm. His legs aren't all the way up in the air. He's just kind of doing this thing onto his head, like a paused somersault. Or maybe yeah. he was trying to do a somersault. I can't remember. <laughs> it's not very athletic. <laughs> but his neck got cricked, and he just kind of like flopped over backwards. Yeah. And then he stood up and looked right at the cameras to see if they had captured it. <laughs> wow. And then I made eye contact with him, and you could see this annoyance and frustration. Interesting. That like just in that moment, he wasn't a witch doctor. He was just a guy doing an act. Sure. Right. He was like embarrassed at that point. Yeah. In time. yeah. And, like, you could see yeah. the embarrassment and the, his awareness of the cameras. And I was like, oh, he Ooh. doesn't believe this is going to work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it, it, it is crazy, though, too, to think, you know, he's got all these people believing this. And in his own mind, he knows you, you guys think that he knew that it was bullshit. In his own mind. I think he believed some of it. Okay. Yeah, I do. And then he's like, well, I'm making some money, so let me just, like, note this a bit. Yeah. Totally, yeah. It's kind of fucked up how that happens, you know? Because, like, then, like, you have all these people who are like, oh, my God, please help me. What do you do? Like, you, you, you just go... 
No, that was like just a one-time thing. It's like a hard situation to deal well, with. Well, it's like you, any, you know, you go to the dentist in America. Yeah. If you go to a fucking dentist yep. in America, they're going to try and sell you a night guard. You have sick. Yeah. yeah. You guarantee they're going to go. Grind you your you teeth. grind your teeth. Yep. yep. I, mean, I got to make this night guard for you at six hundred bucks. Yep. yep. Doesn't matter if you grind your teeth or not. Nope. They're trying to sell it to you. Correct. Yep. Yep. But, I mean, I, yeah. Right. It's not that they don't believe that they're dentists. It's not that they don't believe they're taking care of your teeth. Right, right. But, you know, you, it's not going to hurt anybody if I sell you a night guard. Yeah, that's, like kind exactly. of the, that's like kind of the fucked up division between being a good person and being a shitty person. Yeah. Like Being a good person and being a dentist. That's yeah. where the line is drawn. <laughs> Bro, don't get me started on dentists or fucking oh, veterinaries man. Narians in L.A., man. They're the worst. Vets are great. What are you talking about? Vets? Yeah. Vets Dude, save in animals' LA? lives. No, no, no. Listen, I'm not... I'm, again, this is the same thing. That I'm not saying they... You're, you're good. You, you rest. They don't, yeah. they don't not save pets' lives, right. but they are... They've saved so many lives, they're pretty fucking jaded, and Straight up. they want... That not all of them. They want a lot of them want that fucking money. You go in there, they want to run thousand dollars worth of tests. They're great. I'm glad we have them. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, my dog. I went to one. She said he needed nine teeth pulled. Called my ex because it was the emergency number at 11 p.m. at night. Was frantic that these teeth must come out the right next then. day. Right then. Ne- yeah. yeah they and gotta I, come meanwhile, out. your dog's been living with rotten teeth for, for three years. Calls, yeah. calls the emergency number knowing <laughs> that it's, you know, the person I'm with that they're going to freak out at 11 p.m. at night and is like, oh, this needs to be taken care of. Like, it doesn't, and I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? Go to a different vet. <laughs> Needed a few teeth out. It cost like 300 bucks. This was going to be like a 1900 or a 900 plus like 300. Five. I'm just like, it was all bullshit. And she was <laughs> causing this frantic. So I love vets for what they do. I think that a lot of them have crossed that line I just spoke of where they now are doing Making a lot of money off of it. Yeah, it's Can't same, same as the witch doctor. I love how I love how my question of like was God, there you any... just ranted and I loved it. It was I like six rants. minutes straight. You know what? Real quick, Forrest. Yeah. Real fucking. I quick. challenge you. Okay. Yes. Thirty seconds. I need a rant. Something you're passionate about. Rant. I love Me. This. Yep. Go now. Yeah. Okay. Go nad. Shit. Let me think for a second. Twenty nine. What's, what's big? No. Let me think. Okay, I got one for you. Yes! I got one for Here's you. Rant. Here we go. Rant coming up. Okay, this starts off as a what's in the news, but then I'm going to rant on it. Okay, okay. All right, so this lady gets back to the UK. She's got a gecko in her bra sitting in the in the suitcase, okay? She know that it Bitch. was Bitch! No, no, she doesn't know. She's not smuggling. She's not smuggling geckos. She gets there. She opens up her suitcase. She's been in the Caribbean. Oh, my God, there's a gecko. She calls animal welfare, okay. right? They come. They, it's, a, it's a whole news headline, okay? Yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. Here comes a rant. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm this ready. lady's a fucking hero, okay? Because she calls the animal welfare services and say, hey, there's a, there's a lizard in my bra. What do I do? Ah. Meanwhile, the rest of the fucking world smuggling these animals all over the place, mm-hmm. right? We're trying to get pet populations in England. We're trying to get rare geckos in America and New Zealand. The whole world's fucked up from invasive species, right. okay? There's invasive species fucking everywhere. There's good ways to do it with the pet trade. They've now regulated that to the point where, you know, you can't breed it. Australia can't have exotic animals. It depends on the creature here and depends I on the creature I need angrier. There. Angrier, Forrest. Angrier. No, I'm giving you a good rant that I'm serious about okay. here. You go to fucking Texas, you can have a tiger. You know, nobody gives a shit. You can be Joe Exotic. You can have tigers. You can have lions, everything. You know, you go to California, you can't have a pet salamander in case it gets out. It's all over the fucking place. Like, there's no blanket coverage of, like, this is fair, this is wrong, this is right. Right, right, And there absolutely should be. We either get exotic pets, you know, or the line is drawn at big cats. It's drawn at reptiles. It's wherever it's drawn. Right. And I I I see merit in that. Or no fucking exotic pets. Right, you know? so you're saying the federal government should have some sort of law as opposed to each state doing their own thing? Yeah, and it just shouldn't be such a mess. Right. And this woman shouldn't be a hero for calling animal services <laughs> right. because she had a fucking <laughs> lizard in her bra. Right. Right. You know, like, it, 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 it's, it's just such a mess. Like, we just decide here and there. Like, this is good, this is bad. These animals, you shouldn't have. These animals, you should have. Sure. If we all had Western pond turtles for pets in California, we wouldn't have fucking invasive red ear sliders and soft shell turtles and snapping turtles all over the state. Right. You know, if they were just like, hey, those rare turtles that are hard to find that are native to California, let's make them popular in the pet trade. Everybody in California can have those, but no other t- turtles. 
There'd be in every fucking pond and creek around the state. Instead, we have thousands of red ear sliders that are destroying have. Yeah. yeah. No, but no, it's good. It's good. So when you give a, I a give dog, it a, I give it like California. a four out of ten. So Thanks. you have to get your dogs chipped in California. Yeah. Yep. Right. It's a law. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you buy an exotic pet at the fucking reptile show or whatever, right, that is invasive to yep. the area you live, mm-hmm. why not just make it a legal requirement that at the, at the point of purchase that it has to be chipped? Sure. And that way, if it's discovered out in the wild, someone knocks at your door and goes, you're getting fucking fined $6,000. Right. Why'd yeah. you let your boa go? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, 100%. that's, that's why point. Are, why aren't exotic animals or invasive pets chipped the way that a fucking dog is straight up that's, that's a great question that's a good question. or you get a permit or you know something but that that's what i mean it's a mess we have all these invasive species half of them come from the pet trade right you know the other half are oh no don't do that that's bad well we can't keep endangered species if we were keeping endangered western pond turtles they'd be fucking everywhere and we wouldn't have right. invasive turtles Okay. You know, like there's, 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 there's a rant. fix there. What's that? There's a good rant. It was, it was solid. I'm going to bump it up to a five and a half out of 10. Out of 10? I'll take it. I mean, that's good. It was now, good. now it's your turn, it sir. Tough. I know the, I have to rant. There has been, there has been some memes on the wild times pod dot memes account on Instagram of you from earlier pods. I don't even know what yeah. you're talking about, <laughs> right. Furious. but they pull out like a, a quick <laughs> Two second, three three second thing, and then take it out of context. It is fucking magical. Let's have it. Rant. Shit. Give them something. You put me on the Give spot. the people By the way, what you they think want. Of your rant for a second. I just want to. No, seriously. <laughs> think, think. Yeah, while you think ahead. of your rant for a second, I just want to point out that you, Brosners, everybody that listens to this, you guys are fucking incredible. Like the fact that there is a a, a meme page for the wild times. You guys buy merch you, uh, 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 people are making bookmarks uh, you know it's just like yeah, crazy yeah. right there you guys write Ooh. jokes for us yeah bro and Roberts made these incredible Lemley bookmarks and thylacine bookmarks I mean you guys are absolutely look Patrick knows this Patrick's been in TV a long time Retepted whale wars I've done all these different TV shows written the book I have never had a more dedicated awesome more intimate group of people interested in the work than the Brosners that watch this podcast. So thank yep. you guys very much. It's thank like you. a family group and a friend group as opposed to like fans, which nobody likes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't have fans. No. No, I mean, it's it's because we always say, tell a friend, but only a cool one. That's the only reason that the podcast <laughs> has such great fucking fans. But honestly, the guy who do, does the memes account, I, I was like, yeah, man, that's fine. Go ahead and do it. It's... I, it's, it's the great. only Instagram fucking thing it, I look at. It's now. really it's good. I can't wait yeah, for a new one shit. to come out. It's I'm great. like, these are yeah, genius. Firehue puts up magazine ads. I mean, it's yeah, crazy. That's right. Firehue. Yeah. I got a rant. Crazy. Yeah, what do you got? Yeah. Better be a 10, mate. Get fired up. <laughs> trees have. I'm not fucking joking right now. Okay. I think trees have gotten out of control. Okay. Here's what I'm talking about. This is interesting. I, I'm it's walking. starting off slow. You, you no, got I'm, me, walking, baby I'm walking the other day, right? <laughs> you ever heard of a widow maker? Uh, yeah, branch falls out of a tree, kills yeah. a guy. Yeah. yeah. I've now had three close calls in my life with a widow maker. One was in my fucking neighborhood in Studio City. Okay. I don't know what this thing is. It's a fucking nut about this big. <laughs> it's about the size of a fucking mango. Okay. It fucking comes bombarding down. <laughs> Angrier! Dude, it's shut the... I don't want coaching! (laughs) It's like a 150-foot tall tree, man. And this thing fucking misses Christina's head by like a quarter of a fucking inch. To the extent where I'm like, she's dead if if that hits her. Would have actually Mm -hmm. caused problems. I think it would have caved her fucking skull on like a pancake. (laughs) I had a close call on Santa Monica Boulevard Mm -hmm. with one of those huge, you know, the big heavy fucking brown part of the palm. Uh palm. Oh yeah, yeah. The thing falls down. We're three of us walking down the sidewalk, lands on a car two feet from us, smashes the fucking sunroof of the car in, right? That's a widow maker. You were with me for one of them when we were hiking in Kauai. Oh yeah, I remember remember that? that. Fucking tree branch fucking just falls trees, and nearly man. crushes uh, our third friend's head, <laughs> right? <laughs> the mailmen in Key West have to wear helmets for because, coconuts because two of them fucking died I've heard from this. coconuts falling out of trees. <laughs> yeah, and I feel These like fucking trees, man. Dude, we're we're always going save the trees, save the trees. <laughs> They're trying to take us out. <laughs> Maybe those Moabs really knew what they were doing out there on the Easter Islands. They were called they were Moabs. <laughs> That's Moab. a part of Utah. These Utahian Moabs. I'm just saying, man, you get PTSD from this shit. 
Like, now I'm looking up at trees. I don't trust them right now. <laughs> and I'm worried that the next time we go out for a fucking shoot and we're going through the jungle going... I had a mo- I swear to God, a monkey threw a fucking nut at my head in Thailand. I believe I'm it. 100% positive because the canopy was like way the fuck up there, dude. At least 10 stories. Uh-huh. I would expect that if nuts are going to fall on my head, it's going to be a group, a single nut. <laughs> And it hit me right on top of the head, and that just sends a shockwave down your whole body. You ever had that experience? You get uh, hit no. right on top of the head? With a nut? Yeah. That was thrown by a monkey? Yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying, look out for the trees, man. Don't trust them. Now, yeah. should you cut them down? No, we need them. Right. But be aware. But Keep your head on a swivel and consider wearing blood. a fucking helmet because they're out for blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Forrest. Let's now get you a nice green helmet that you can just wear around town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Just, just a daily helmet. Uh, it yeah. was the concept of the color of the helmet is what offended his that sensibility. Very much so offended me. <laughs> I think yeah. I think that we should from now on every podcast we should come in with one rant each. It doesn't matter what it is. The show's called Wild Times. It can be wild in the sense that, you know, you used to rant about Lindsay Lohan Constantly, he still does. And rant. all we of her got to get him going. People getting stuck in chimneys well, now, for Christ's sake! Oh man, don't get me constantly. started. Constantly, I remember this one from an old podcast we did where it ended. I don't remember what it was about. He was furious. You're ranting he, about his rants. He wanted right to now. spit on this woman's windshield. The good old days is all I'm saying. One oh, rant yeah. every podcast. If you like it, weigh in. <laughs> well, we're that's weird. Do we have a jingle for yeah. the ranting podcast? No, for. Segment? I think it's time. The time. Ooh. It's time, mate. What's in the news? Nope. I think I know what time it is. What time is it? Do you know what time it is? There's a delay. Fuck off. For what? The battle. Do it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if that felt good. Nah, it's fine. It looked refreshing. What do you got for us? Me? I see that you've highlighted okay. one. And the thing. One for us. One. Well, we, we did a big behind the scenes talk about the cave today. It's apparently yeah. a couple of Patreons asked about it. So I thought maybe maybe we'd play around with a cave themed battle royale. Google like this. Okay. caves. Let's okay. go. Yep, yep. Google caves. <laughs> They're the things with holes in the dirt, Peter. <laughs> yep. um, ah, I gotta get ready. So yeah, stretch it out. Um, mm. So it's it's a traditional Kyle, BR. You stretch fight to the death. Okay. You're building one creature to fight in complete darkness, subterranean, oh, okay. under the ground in a cave. Okay, okay. I'm going to go first. Okay. He's got um, one. He's what? found one on no, Google. No, 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 no. This is from my uh, my memory. <laughs> go for it, mate. The fucking naked mole rat, baby. <laughs> Good. This thing what has part of it, though? a thousand... But, but, but remember, head, calm down. Head, body, legs. Head, yeah. body, legs. Calm the yeah. fuck down. Calm man. down. I'm taking the head because this thing can... It lives underground in darkness. It can see and sense... No, it's, I, I'm, How dare you shake your head? I'm at my glad selection. you took a, something with a two inch face. <laughs> no, because it's the face. The body is going to be what determines the size of the oh, animal. Yeah, we We've gone over rule. this. We did. Yeah, make that we did. Rule. We did. I don't know if we ever told the Brosners, but we did make that. <laughs> we rule. made it. it we have wasn't conversations the yeah. off the yeah, air. The about body this. determines the size, <laughs> and you <laughs> scale creature. up. Yeah. This is why so I get you confused. So you got the naked mole rat. You want those nasty and fucking teeth? The f- whole face, though. You get the teeth. No, you get the the independently moving teeth. They can sense. Uh, they can sense underground and travel very well underground. They barely come up for air. They barely need to breathe. So it's a very well-equipped animal to be in darkness in a cave, and it has a very aggressive brain because they kill each other or something like that. Okay. Copy copy that. All right. Copy okay. that. I don't mind that. They kill the queen. The queen kills uh, okay. everyone. Okay. Did that give you enough time to Google, or are we going to have a bunch of dead air? No, I can go. Yeah, go ahead for us. Okay. Um... <laughs> What do you say? <laughs> I don't know. But before it's too headphones. late. So that was a good pick, by the way. Thank you. It was. Thank you. Naked mole rat. You hear terrifying that, critter. Um, I want to pick. So this is a battle in complete darkness. Mm-hmm. I want to take this off of the table. So I'm going to pick. Yep. You know it. I'm going to take the head of a bat. I need that sonar. Okay. I don't need good eyesight. I need to be able to know where everything is around me, know where my opponents are. I've got the fantastic sonar of, let's say, a white-nosed bat. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, okay. I, I like where your head's at. Get it? I yeah, see did the dad we joke. got it. Dad joke. It's smart. It's you should smart. have switched to yourself. <laughs> bats, you are, bats are pretty ferocious. You mm-hmm. know, they got, a, they got a nasty little face on mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They use sonar. Yep. That's pretty cool. That's pretty you cool. left me the low-hanging fruit, and I got to take it. Okay. I'm going to take the head of a white shark. 
I'm going to take advantage of electro reception, the ampullae of Lorenzini. I considered that. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be able to easily fucking suss out where your creatures are. It's, these, these are features that Through. are being applied in a different habitat. I had not considered it. Very the good. Of, the head of a white shark. And uh, by the way, it's uh, jaws a little bit scarier than your bat. Than it's your pitch tiny, black. Tiny fruit bat. Nobody right. can see. Doesn't need to see because the whole point is it has another sense. Okay. Um, so now I've got to think about what body I want to put it on. Hmm. It's got to be big. Need yeah, something big. Must I want, be. s- want some size here. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's like I feel like we always pick the same. Sh- I'm always picking elephant and blue whale, and people are getting pissed. <laughs> yeah, they hate I, you. Yeah, I, I can't do that. I've taken rhino. Um, now, is this body, is this head, body, legs, or head, body, special abilities? Whatever you want. What? Let's what do you mean? If I was to ask that question, I'd be skewered by the two of you. That's true. That's you would. Yeah, yeah we Answer would the question. Yeah, you, you, Don't uh, give him whatever it was. Head, body, legs. Head, body, legs. <laughs> All right. I, I chose my head for its special ability, so I'm going head, body, legs. Yeah, true. All right. I'm going to take the legs. I'm going real simple here, because the body determines the size. Yep. I want the legs of a tarantula. I want eight fucking legs covered in hair. I want th- it to be able to move laterally very quickly as it its electroreception tells them where your meager animals are. Okay. <laughs> uh, legs of a tarantula. I'll pick my body last. Okay. Okay. Go ahead Peter? First. Oh, I'm up next. That's right. This? Um, I'm the only one this who This is how unprecedented. Did you just ask yep. a question about the structure of how a snake draft works? I messed also, it up completely. Also, Peter just invented a new word. Unprecedented. Yeah. Precedented. Unprecedented. There is no <laughs> president in the room. Fuck um, all right. Uh, it's funny because Patrick's leg pick was very similar to mine, except mine's better, so I'm going to stick with it. Okay. Um, I am going to pick the legs of a whip scorpion. If you're not familiar with a whip scorpion, it's that creepy cave critter that runs up the walls in Harry Potter. They do the Patronus or whatever with it. Yeah. 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 Legs of a whip scorpion can move upside down, all around. Climb the walls. Climb the walls. That's going to be very useful in a cave. uh, Without any question. Yep. Yep. Okay. God, you're up for two, so. This is going to be rough. Um, I've been Googling furiously (laughs) cave animals. Uh, So I have the naked mole rats, head, brain, teeth. Yep. Uh, <laughs> my my legs need to be scary. You took spider and you took scorpion, which is what I was going to use. I'm actually just going to give it the, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to give my animal the body of a very large anaconda. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to explain why? Well, or? Yeah, they're very strong okay. and, and it's pitch black. So this thing's going to slither up. It's not making any footstep noises when it's coming it's up true. to you. Good. Good. It's going to be very you're, hard you're, to detect. You're getting 78 episodes in, you're getting the essence of the game. Yep. Yeah. He's, hey, I, I, he's getting, I, there. He's getting there. I just yeah. want to say yeah. it's going to be difficult to detect with echolocation because it's just so low to the ground. Well, but it's not going to be difficult to detect with electro reception. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and then. Um, yeah. Finally, since this is also a cave-dwelling creature, and I know I've used it in the past, it is one of my favorites and a fan favorite. Mentioned earlier tonight, Herpes. don't step on my <laughs> cave-dwelling creatures. <laughs> Fucking, it is herpes, and that is because idiot. it so dwells in oh, caves. But the real advantage to this animal, my friends, is that it is a self-replicating virus. Therefore, my creature has the ability to replicate itself over and over. Okay. So imagine thousands. We don't need to. No, millions <laughs> no, no. of well, we, we anacondas millions. with yes. mole rat heads. So here's, here's coming, why we're coming not going to spend you. any time entertaining this. <laughs> herpes doesn't have legs. Uh, it's the legs of herpes. He How would you spent. know, mate? How do you know that? I've seen what viruses what? look like. Are you sure you didn't go to yeah, the doctor they, when they, they pulled do- one off your dick? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> they don't. Yeah, they pulled a single virus. <laughs> one, one herpes. With legs. I'm, I'm, I don't need to say anything. <laughs> Move forward. We'll let the Brosners decide. Yeah. With For, legs. Forrest, go ahead. All right, so keep in mind, I have the echolocation, the head of a white-nosed bat. It's not going to do a whole lot. Nothing. Nope. It'll do zero. Nope. Mm-hmm. I have the legs of a whip scorpion. Mm-hmm. Not going to do much. There's Nothing. No venom. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a lot oh, going on. No. Just walking but, around. But, haha. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, the size of this creature is determined by its body. Which I so pointed So I out. have yes. the body of a hippopotamus. Sure. So my creature, in, ca- in pitch blackness, can climb up the walls. It can detect you from anywhere in the cave. And it's just going to come up 
and just fucking body slam you from anywhere. Oh, so it's going to climb the walls and then it's going to use its own girth. Yeah, it's just going to crush you. It's just going to body slam, going to drop uh, off the how roof. How much does a hippopotamus weigh? Much more than an anaconda, sir. I'm, no, I mean, I'm just, uh, yeah. I'm just asking. Uh, I have to Google Google it. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, 2,000 pounds. 2,000? No, more than that. More than that. So let's say like 11,000 pounds. And uh, uh, you think 4, that this, pounds. you think an animal this size is going to be able to crawl walls in a cave, no matter yes. how big the legs? Yes, because it has the legs of a whip scorpion okay. scaled up. I was yeah. just asking a so question. Here's, it's fine. Here's <laughs> where Forrest just fucked himself. Uh oh, this is where he lost. No, that was in my bathroom. Your four thousand pound <laughs> hippo bodied whip scorpion legged creature using its own girth to crush other animals. I'm a little worried it's going to hurt itself in that fall. Maybe. Um, especially when it falls on my animal, because I'm taking the body of a 660-pound Galapagos tortoise. Oh, nah. very nice. It's, it's, okay. it's protected by armor. Just it has really the matter. echolocation of a white shark. Nope. And the crawly, creepy legs of a tarantula. <laughs> what? How? What, so, okay. I mean, first of all, it's no, just, no, 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 no. it's no, 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 no there's no, 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 no question. Herpes legs, eh. Listen, <laughs> herpes legs Bro, is a hell of a call. You're done. That's Your where the off. self-replicating D- R- RNA is in herpes. Oh, it's I'm in so its legs. I'm so sorry to you, so Kyle. <laughs> the whole cave, Literally to everybody. the entire <laughs> cave terrible. will sorry, be guys. filled to the brim, squashed, scrunched in there with my anaconda fucking naked it's mole not, rat head. Have. It is because this is how they replicate. It well, replicates this was itself. a lot of fun until yeah, Peter was... picked herpes. <laughs> Neither of you will be able to fit in Weigh the cave. In if you're a bro, thousands, thousands, thousands. Who's going to win my, my body slamming hippo whip scorpion white nosed bat? Patrick's great white shark headed Galapagos tortoise bodied wow. tarantula creature? Wow. Or Peter's Boo. naked mole rat head on an anaconda's body with the legs of herpes. <laughs> um, whatever that means. Holy shit. Give us a, sh- give us a shout. Shit. Leave us a comment. Leave us a review. When's the last time we asked for a five-star Do five we still have that? Review? Are we on iTunes still? I haven't it's checked. It's now called Apple I actually Music, do. I think, or Apple Podcasts. I don't, yeah, think, I don't, I don't think they call it iTunes Just give anymore. us five stars. Say we're great. <laughs> Tell a friend, but only if that friend's cool. That's right. right? Go Woo. to the Wild Times Podcast. Shut the fuck up, Pat. Dot com forward slash info. He's meager. Again, that's the Wild Times Podcast dot com forward slash info. If you want to check out all the bullshit we can't put on the YouTube, go to the Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash Wild Times Pod. You can find us wildtimespod.com on all the social channels. We fucking love you. Pat, you're meager. Hey, if you want four additional podcasts a month. Yeah. Patreon's a good place to find Plus that. Plus, video, video footage we can't show on YouTube. Uh, Patrick's penis is on there. That's Forest, nice. BTS stuff. Um, yeah, all there's good shit. stuff all on there. Sure. Very good. Yeah, sex tapes are coming soon. What? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Who's? You kill us so I much just, with the outro. I mean, you have to. You have to. <laughs> so bad. I can't even do it. It's over. It's the last moment. Dance. dance. With 25 dance, seconds. Dance, monkey, dance. The last 15 minutes with him. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> After the whole ranting thing, I mean, it was, it was the end of uh, it for me. What a mess. Good night, everybody.